give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Thank him for what he did on Monday. Thank him for what he did on Tuesday. Thank him for fighting your battles for you yesterday. And then praise his holy name for what he's about to do today. Magnify his holy name. Praise the King of Kings. Praise the Lord of Lords. Praise the Ancient of Days. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Bless his holy name. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be magnified. Praise him. He is our savior, our healer, our deliverer. The unchangeable changer. Magnify his holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Now lift your voice to him loud and clear and say, Father. Whatever prayer I pray here tonight, please answer by fire. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Whatever prayer I pray here tonight, my Father and my God, please answer by fire. Anything I may request from you today, please answer by fire, Lord. Whatever prayer I pray here tonight, my Lord and my Savior, please answer me by fire. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I have a God who never fails. I have a God who never fails. I have a God Who never fails forever? Hallelujah.
ancient of days, the unchangeable changer, the one who can never fail, the one with the ability to answer prayers, the one who was before mountains and can uproot mountains. Glory be to your holy name. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you did on Monday. Thank you for what you did on Tuesday. Thank you for what you did yesterday. Thank you for what you're about to do now. Thank you for all the testimonies. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Father, tonight, like we have never done before, answer our prayers. Grant all our requests. Even as your son had already prophesied, by the time we leave here, let us sing a new song. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. Let's shake hands with two or three people and tell them, God, we answer your prayers today. And then if we believe that, shout a big hallelujah. You may please be seated. Today, eight more children have been born. Including a set of twins. Out of the eight children, five are boys. Three are girls. So the total number of children born thus far is 20, 11 boys, and nine girls. Let the boys shout, praise the Lord. And let the girls shout, hallelujah. Well, by tomorrow we will know who will be the leader. But it looks as if the boys are seriously on the move. Glory be to God. I want to give all glory to God for all my elder brothers who had ministered today. Uh, I'm thanking God for the great evangelist, Prophet Abiara, for coming at all. I, I know it's a great sacrifice for him to be here today. We thank God for your life, sir. I want to thank God for Bishop Michael Conko, I mean, what, what administration. And then, of course, my in-law himself came and rode down here to tell us that we are going to sing a new song. Glory be to God forevermore. And, of course, I'm thanking God for my son, Bishop Walioke. Uh, my own private prophet. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause for all these great men of God. Thank you for your being a blessing to us, and the Lord will bless you in return. Very quickly tonight, because we're going to pray, and you understand when we get to that stage. I've been asked to share on before they call. In other words, even before you cry to God tonight, the answer will come. But before I go to the text, and of course, we'll follow the same pattern we've been following uh, 
the sermon will be two sections a brief one to give room for those who are yet to give their life to Jesus to do so so that they can be blessed together with the rest of us in the second part before I go to the text for tonight let's, let, let, let me go through the text for the Congress itself which is Joel chapter 2 from verse 25 to 27 Joel 2 25 to 27 and I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. And, and ye shall, shall know that, that I am in the midst of, of Israel, and, and that, that I am the Lord your God, and honest, and my people shall never be ashamed. You know, a word came, came yesterday, yesterday during, during the ministration that, that God, God said there was, was someone, someone in our midst, and, and later on, I pondered over that word and I know he must be talking about me. When God said, relax, you shall never be humiliated. I believe that's for me, I don't know about you. So tell your neighbor, whether you believe it or not, I am not going to be humiliated. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 65 from verse 20 to 24 Isaiah chapter 65 verse 20 to 24 There shall be no more than an infant of days nor an old man that has not fulfilled his days for the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and, and my next shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They, they shall, shall not labor in vain, nor, nor bring, bring forth for, for trouble. trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And why they are yet speaking, I will hear. If, if you believe that's for you, let me hear your amen loud and clear. God, in His Word, made some fantastic promises concerning prayers. I know you've heard some people say that when you pray, God will say yes, that he will say no, or he will ask you to wait. Uh, it sounds very nice. But the next time you hear somebody say that, ask the fellow to show you where it is written in the Bible because there's nowhere in the Bible where God says if you call on me I will say well either yes or no or maybe or no 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 the little Bible I know says that 
If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. John chapter 14, verse 14. John 14, verse 14. The Almighty God said, If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I say, Little child in the Lord, when I've just been born again and I was now reading the Bible with understanding, because, oh, we've read the Bible before, we've read it to, to do work. But after I became born again, the Bible became something new. I know now when I'm reading, I'm hearing from God. So when I came to John 14, verse 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And as a mathematician, I know the meaning of anything. Anything means there is no exception. I had to stop. That whoever made this promise, he has to be the Almighty, or he must be a madman. Because if anybody dares give me a blank check, already signed, and he asked me to write any amount that I want on that check, <laughs> I will clear his account. And that's exactly what Jesus said. So I had to say, wait a minute. I, I decided I would go back and read from verse 1. When I got to verse 6, I saw him say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The truth. Not the one who speaks the truth. But the truth himself. Ah. <laughs> I said, uh, if that is the case, I think I will look at prayer from a different perspective. From that time till now, by the grace of God, when I cry to God, I expect an answer. Is there anybody here tonight who believes that whatever you ask God for tonight, He will give it to you? If you are the one, wave your hand and shout hallelujah. You see, because the, the more I study the Bible, the more convinced I became that God answers prayers. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call upon me and I will answer you. Psalm 50 verse 14 to 15, Psalm 50 verse 14 to 15 says, you come to his presence with thanksgiving, you pay your vows, then you call upon him in the day of trouble, and he says, I will answer you. He didn't say maybe. He didn't say I may. He said, I will answer you. Numbers 23 verse 19, Numbers 23 verse 19 he says, God is not a man that he should lie. Has he said, and will he not do it? Has he spoken and not bring it to pass? But then I know some of us who say, Sir, we've prayed before. We don't seem to have the answer yet 
Well, I've, I've studied the Bible on the issue of prayer. I spent some real quality time studying prayer. And I found that, yes, there are some cases when you will call on him and he won't answer you exactly the way you ask. And I will just mention a few very briefly, quickly. Number one, if you ask contrary to his will, he's not going to answer. First John chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. First John 5, 14 to 15. He said, if we ask according to his will, we have the confidence that he hears us. And if he hears, uh, the answer will come. But if you ask him to do something contrary to his will, he's going to ignore you. I mean, I remember one occasion I got, I think God just has a sense of humor. He just wanted to show me some things. Two letters. One from a woman who asked me to pray. He said, sir, I heard that when you pray, God will answer. My daughter-in-law, it's a pain in my neck. Pray that God will kill her. Oh yeah, true story. And I'm sure God arranged me to get these two letters. Because as almost immediately I dropped that letter. And I picked the next one. It's from another lady. And by looking at the names. They have the same surname. And the letter happened to be from the very daughter-in-law and she wrote almost exactly the same thing the mother-in-law wrote sir i hear that when you pray god will answer my mother-in-law is not allowing me to have peace in my husband's house pray that god will kill her <laughs> i just smiled you ask God to commit murder, it's not going to answer you. As a matter of fact, I said, God, if you give me permission, I will pray so that the two of them will go. Because the mother-in-law wants me to pray that the daughter-in-law may die. The daughter-in-law wants me to pray that the mother-in-law may die. But of course, of course, God won't answer that kind of question. There are occasions when you ask God for something and he may not give it to you because he has something better or bigger in store for you. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1 verse 6 to 12, 2 Chronicles 1 6 to 12, Solomon asked only for wisdom and understanding. God said that is too little. I will give you that. I will give you silver. I will give you gold. I will give you peace. I will. He, God gave you much more. Because the God you are talking to is Jehovah El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. And Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, Ephesians 3, verse 20 says, He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask. Or think Ephesians 3 20. You remember very well when I became general overseer and uh, I had to leave the mansion I was living in in Ilorin to come and live in a room in Mushi. I was crying to him, Father, just build me a house, even if it's boys' quarters. And the answer he gave me is, Son, don't ask me for a house. Because I've decided to build you a city. I asked for a house. He said, I will build you a city. And you can see a little bit of that city that he promised that he will build. At times, you ask and you don't get the answer because you are too slow in asking. Isaiah 55, verse 6. Isaiah 55 verse 6 says, You are to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. At 
At times you don't get an answer because you are too casual in your prayer. And Jeremiah 29 verse 13, Jeremiah 29 verse 13 says, You will find me when you seek me with all your heart. We'll be praying and some of you will be looking around, looking at other people praying. God will look at you and you are not serious. If they told you you are dying of cancer, and you say, just let me get to the Congress. God, don't let me die till I get to the Congress. And then when you arrive for Monday, your prayer will be different from the one who has no problems at all. I can see when, it's, when we say, let us pray. I see some of you with one hand in your pocket, standing as if you are talking to your house help. We're talking to the King of Kings. He says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, Hebrews 11 verse 6, he says, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. In Luke chapter 18 verse 1 to 8, Luke 18 verse 1 to 8, he talks about a woman who went to a judge and said, I need help. And the judge said, I don't have time for you. The woman said, I won't let you go until you do something about my face when you hold on to god when you pray persistently diligently when you pray in such a manner that god himself will know that your life depends on the answer the answer will come i told you that on this campground i was walking about around 2 a.m in the night crying to god god I have surrendered my life to you. I've surrendered everything. I don't want to be an ordinary pastor. You just have to empower me to do this work. I've been praying that prayer for a while. But that particular night I said, Lord, it's either you empower me or you call me home. That night he answered. And there was an earthquake here. There's going to be another earthquake here tonight. And then, of course, some people ask, not even believing he will answer anyway. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 11, from verse 22, all the way to 24, Mark 11, 22 to 24. You must have faith in God. You don't come to God in prayer. If you don't, if you don't believe he's going to answer, why bother to pray? But he says, if you believe him, then you will move mountains. That's what he said. It's not a liar. And then, of course, Probably one of the biggest obstacles to the answer to your prayer is sin. Because Psalm 66 verse 18, Psalm 66 verse 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Now if he doesn't hear, how can he answer? If you are calling me and I didn't hear, how will I answer? So if you regard iniquity in your heart, it's not going to hear. If it doesn't hear, there can be no answer. Like, I, like I've mentioned to you so during this Congress, when we talk about sin, some of you will be thinking of adultery or theft or something. Huh. There is the true meaning of sin is disobedience, pure and simple. And so he said in John 15, verse 16, John 15, verse 16, he said, Listen, you've not chosen me, I've chosen you that you go, bear fruit, and love fruit abide. He said, Be a so winner 
like one of my brothers said not too long ago, the reason God didn't take you home immediately you were saved is because he has work for you to do here on earth. He wants you to win souls. He added in that John 15 verse 16, he said, if you do this thing that I said, then you will ask anything from my father and it will be done for you. But when he said go win souls and you sit down you are not winning souls then you can't go ahead now you can't believe in disobedience and then ask him to answer your prayers. When I was a little boy my mom would say Enoch ma go and fetch water and you know in those days the, the only water you fetch is from the local stream and she's always asking me to go and fetch water when I'm playing football with my friends and the football is a rotten orange but it's our football and we were, we were enjoying ourselves kicking the rotten orange one to the other and then she would say go and fetch water and I said, I'm not going. And she won't say anything. Sooner or later, hunger will come. And I will come to Mama, Mommy, I'm hungry. And she will say, Oh, that's no problem. There is food. We we'll go and fetch water. Oh, I will fetch the water as soon as I get food. No, 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 no go and fetch water I thank God for my mother and I thank God for other mothers like that I'm dying of hunger go and fetch water if you are obedient to the almighty God he will answer your prayers and then of course he said in his word proverbs chapter 1 verse 24 to 28 proverbs 1 24 to 28 he said because i stretch out my hands towards you i said come come to my side and you refused i invited you to me he said i'm not coming i said no problem He said, a time will come when you two will call and I will not answer. He said, you will cry to me and I will say, I don't, I can't even hear you. He said, many of us who say we want God to answer our prayers. Let me tell you, my brother and my sister, there's nothing you want from him that is difficult for God to do. It can cure the incurable. It can promote the fellow you do. I mean, you, you've had all the testimonies. It can make short fellow grow. Why this harmony is going on? You've had the testimony. It can cure barrenness. I mean, you've had the testimony 26 years, 33 years. I mean, it's easy with him. With God, all things are possible. you want him to begin to serve you to begin to answer your prayers to begin to supply all your needs and you don't want to do his will you want to continue in sin and you want grace to abound you want to continue in sin and you want miracles no no no, no. You, are, you are not asking for miracles what you're asking for is magic my god is a holy god he answers prayers but on his own conditions tonight we're going to pray some very serious prayers and i can assure you before the sun rises tomorrow somebody is going to testify
But that is why we must have a little break now. But those of you who have been toying with the issue of salvation, those of you who think all you need to do is just come to church, sing like everybody is singing, shout like everybody is shouting, but you are living in sin. He's not going to answer your prayers until you have surrendered your life to him. So if you are here and you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ, we're going to give you just a few minutes. I'm going to count from 1 to 10. Before I say 10, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you run forward. Let his blood wash away your sins. Stop regarding iniquity in your heart. And then God will begin to hear you. And when he hears, he will answer. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, come very speedily. I'm going to count from 1 to 10. And after that, I will pray for salvation. And we'll go to the second section of this little talk. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, begin to run forward now. As I begin to count. One. Two. Three. The greatest obstruction to your prayer is your sin. And that sin must be dealt with if you want him to hear your prayer and to answer. Four. Six. Seven. Now I can see some of you coming from afar. Just keep coming. Make sure you get here before we finish praying. And pray along as you come. Nine. And those of you already in front, talk to the Almighty God. Just ask Him to have mercy on you, to forgive your sins, save your soul. Wash you clean with his mighty powerful blood promise him that from now on you will serve him as your lord and as your savior go ahead begin to talk to him and those of you on the way pray as you come the rest of us let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them let's pray that the almighty god will save their souls let's pray that god will have mercy on them and that today his blood will remove their sins so that there be no more obstruction between them and the answer to their prayers. Please pray for them for just one minute. Uh, those of you on the way, just make sure you get here before I finish praying. And that will be okay. But in the meantime, talk to the Almighty God. Please have mercy on me. Save my soul. And I will serve you. You will be my Lord. You will be my Savior. For the rest of my life go ahead call on him for another 30 seconds and those of you who are still on the way you have to really move now thank you father in jesus mighty name we have prayed savior i just want to bless your holy name because I know you said in your word that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. 
these people have come now. Please receive them in Jesus' name. Let your blood wash away their sins in Jesus' name. As you are saving their souls today, please write their names in the book of life. And from this moment onward, Lord, anytime they call upon you, please answer them by fire. And I pray that they will serve you to the very end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, those of you who have come forward, I want to rejoice with you. Because from now on, by the grace of God, I will be praying for you. And I can assure you, you'll be getting miracles very soon. And so I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer request. And uh, if you turn to your left, you will see somebody there lifting up uh, a placard. You follow him. He will take you to where some pastors are waiting. They will collect the information I need and they bring you back very quickly. God bless you. You can begin to go now. God bless you. Let's clap for Jesus Christ. Salvation is the biggest miracle of all. Let's rejoice with these people who have been saved. They are your new brothers and sisters. Rejoice with them. Give the Lord a big, big round of applause. Even as you go. I hope you remember you are not clapping for me. You are clapping for Jesus. Savior, thank you almighty. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Now, it's time to pray. And from time to time, I'm going to be calling on you to stand and pray. And some things I share with my children, I, just, I think it's in Abuja, not too long ago. I'm going to share the same thing with you and then put something extra. You see, God controls time and seasons. Daniel chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. Daniel 2, 20 to 21. He controls times and seasons. He measures time in years in months, in weeks, in days, and so on and so forth. For example, he was speaking in his word in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 6, verse 1 to 3. He said, in the year that King Uzziah died. In the year. And so, you find that some miracles may require a whole year before they arrive. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 19 to 20, 1 Samuel chapter 1, oh well, maybe take it from verse 9 to 20. The moment God spoke to Anna that she was going to have a son. It was already settled. But she had to wait at least for nine months before the baby arrived. The same thing in Luke chapter 1, verse 5 to 25. Luke 1, 5 to 25. And then in Genesis chapter 26, verse 12 to 14, in Genesis 26, verse 12 to 14, the Bible said Isaac sowed in the land and he reaped the same year a hundredfold return. Some miracles may take a year. I was visiting America 
and my children came to receive me in a brand new car. Big car, brand new. And I was wondering, what's going on here? To cut a long story short, there was a lady in America, very successful lady, a medical doctor, had her own practice, but no husband, no child. So she decided, I know what I would do. She bought that brand new car. I said they should use it to move me wherever I'm going. She knew I won't be able to take the car with me when coming to Nigeria. When I finished the journey, she took the car back into the garage and went and sat where I was sitting and cried to the Almighty God. Approximately one year later, I got a phone call. Your daughter, who bought the car for you to ride, is in hospital. I said, what's the problem? Oh, no problem. She's just given birth to her first child. Because within three months, she met the man she wanted to marry. She got married. And the baby came. The, ma the miracle took a year. And so your first prayer tonight, as you stand on your feet, is that you're going to cry to the Almighty God and say, Father, before the end of this year, let my problems be over. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. I say a year is a year. This year is still this year. Before the end of this year, let all my problems be over. Let all my problems be over. Before the end of this year, 2016, let all my problems be over. Let all my problems be over before the end of this year, 2016. Let all my problems be over. Let all my problems be over. This is still a year. We are still within this year. Before the end of this year, Lord, let all my problems be over. Jesus mighty name we have prayed so shall it be in Jesus name please be seated but some miracles need only one month not one year just one month for example in Genesis 29 verse 14 to 19 Genesis 29 verse 14 to 19 we discover that Jacob had been with Laban for just one month when all of a sudden it occurred to Laban ah, yeah I know this fellow is my relative but he shouldn't be working for nothing let's do something after only one month the breakthrough came in Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, Exodus 12, verse 1 to 2, Almighty God said to Moses, He said, you, You'll be here for a while now. There'll be all manners of miracles and signs that I've shown to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh is not yielding. But this month, no more delay. Just one month, and the miracle came. You've heard me share the testimony again and again. 
And we've had several other similar testimonies of my daughter who came to me and said, Daddy, I'm pregnant. And I said, congratulations, because she's married. How long? Three months. Okay, so what, what is it you want me to do? I want, to, I want the baby to be a girl. Ah, three months. What I know from the little science I know, the moment the conception in your womb has been three days, everything that is going to happen about that child is already set to whether it's going to be tall or short, black or light, three days, 72 hours. And you've been pregnant for three months? She said, yes. Are you not the one who taught us that with God all things are possible? I said, I know. I said, I said there's no but. And in any case, I'm not asking you to be the one who performed the miracle. I'm just asking you to agree with me. I said, that's easy. Oh God, I agree with your daughter. Let the baby be a girl. Well, six months later, the baby came. And it's a girl. Now some people will say, oh, it's been a, maybe it's been a girl all along. But then somebody had the testimony. A medical doctor. She's been pregnant for eight months. And she came and said, I had that testimony. I already have four children. And the relatives of my husband said that if I don't give their son a boy I should get ready to leave now I'm pregnant for eight months we have checked and it's a girl but I want it to be a boy I said ma you are a medical doctor he said we are not talking medicine you agree with that lady agree with me so I agreed with her the baby came and it was a boy I want you to stand on your feet and cry to the Almighty God and say, Father, before the end of this month, let me shout for joy. Open your mouth and cry unto the Almighty God. Before the end of this month, let me shout for joy. Before the end of this month. Let me shout for joy. Let me shout for joy. Before the end of this month. Let me shout for joy. Before the end of this month. Let me shout for joy. You know what you are believing God for? Yeah. Lord, before the end of this month, let me shout for joy. No oh, miracle can take just one month. Before the end of this month, oh Lord, let me shout for joy. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. But some miracles need only one week. Not one year. Not one month. But one week. Exodus chapter 20 verse 11. Thank you, Father. The Lord said, there's someone here. He said, nobody in your family had ever reached the top. But he asked me to tell you, you will be the first. I want to say amen to this one even before I tell you. 
Because the Lord said there's someone here tonight. He said, those who are trying to torment you will lose their vision. Exodus chapter 20 verse 11 Exodus 20 verse 11 Tells us that God rested On the seventh day He walked for six days And rested on the seventh The miracle of rest Even for the almighty God Came after one week In Genesis chapter 7 verse 4 Genesis 7 verse 4 God said to the people around the world at that time he said i'm giving you one week to get into the noah's ark one week seven days get in or it might be too late one week and i'm going to tell you a story that many of you have had again and again by the time i finish you will know why i'm repeating it you will remember that very young man came to watch night program and as I was ministering God spoke to me and said there was someone in the crowd who was finding it difficult to pay his house rent and God said in the new year he will become a landlord It was a messenger. It was the only one who said amen. Because he, we are talking about Lagos. And humanly speaking, there was no way that prophecy could come to pass. But then New Year came. He went to greet the chairman of his company. The chairman looked at him and said, ah, messenger, he said, sir, have I given you a Christmas present? He said, no, sir. Have I given you anything for New Year? He said, no, sir. He said, well, Lagos State was selling some houses. I applied for one and I got it and I don't need it. Come and collect the keys. We gave him the keys gave him the address he was expecting a small flat when he got there got to the address he saw a whole house put the key inside the door open can this be true he went upstairs the following day when he saw the chairman he didn't just prostrate he rode to the right he rode to the left and the chairman said messenger he says sir is there any furniture in the house? He said, no, sir. The chairman said, I change my furniture every Christmas. The ones I used last year, I don't even know where to put them. He called one of the drivers of the company. Go and load that furniture and take it to this boy's house. <laughs> True story. A member of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. By December 31st, he was having a problem paying his house rent. Before one week, he was living in his own house, sitting on the furniture of the chairman. I want you to stand on your feet and lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, within one week, let my testimony be complete. Open your mouth and cry unto the Almighty God. Within one week. Let my testimonies be complete. Within one week. Within one week. Within one week. Let my testimonies be complete within one week within one week 
from today within one week oh lord let my testimonies be complete i know you can do it in one year i know you can do it in one month but uh -uh, you can do it in one week within one week oh lord let my testimonies be complete one week lord within one week in jesus mighty name we have prayed and so shall it be in jesus name please be seated but there are some miracles that require only one day just one day second king chapter 7 verse 1 to 11 second king 7 verse 1 to 11 the bible said there was serious problem in samaria there was a siege things got so bad women were eating their children and the man of god prophesied and said within 24 hours food will be so plenty nobody will even want to buy within a day the people move from starvation to surplus within a day there are other examples but uh, because of time let me just tell you remind you of one young man when we were seeing the first auditorium he had had no job for a long time and he said i'm going to the holy ghost service whatever is going to cost i know if i get there god will answer my prayers but by the time he trekked because he had no money for transportation he woke up very early in the morning and started trekking from lagos to redemption camp by the time he arrived of course he was completely tired and he was fainting so people began to pour water on his head and i find out what is the problem and he told me i have no job no food no money but i know if i get here god will answer my prayers And so I told the story to the congregation. Look at a man of faith. He trekked 46 kilometers to come and pray. That day, he got six job offers. Six different offers of a job. I want you to stand on your feet and cry to the Almighty God and say, Father, before this time tomorrow, let my breakthrough come open your mouth and cry to the almighty god we're not talking about one year oh lord i'm not talking about one month i'm not talking about one week before this time tomorrow let my breakthrough come within 24 hours lord before this time tomorrow before this time tomorrow let my breakthrough come before this time tomorrow let my breakthrough come before this time tomorrow let my breakthrough come just one day one day within 24 hours let 
my breakthrough come. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. But then there are some miracles that cannot even wait for one day. There are some miracles that must happen now. That cannot wait till tomorrow. For example, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 45 to 51, 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 51, when David was face to face with Goliath, <laughs> do you think David could say, uh, all right, Goliath, I will come back tomorrow? No, God has to move and move now. In Daniel chapter 3, when they threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fairy furnace, Daniel chapter 3, if the fourth man had been just one minute late, there have been no testimonies to share. So miracles must happen now. In Matthew chapter 14, Matthew 14, verse 23 to 32. Ah, oh, thank you, Father. The Lord said I should simply inform somebody. He said, just inform the fellow. Tell the fellow, I will help you. In Matthew 14, verse 23 to 32, when Peter was wash, walking on water to go and meet Jesus Christ, and then he took his eyes away, and he began to sink. When he cried to, to the Lord and said, help me. Suppose Jesus Christ said, well, I will help you tomorrow. Or suppose Peter had decided to pray the kind of prayer some of you will pray. Almighty God, I know we do all things are possible. Yeah, you created the waters. I'm sinking now, but I know that uh, uh, there's nothing you cannot do. Even if, if, if Jesus fished him out, his belly would have been full of water. The miracle he needed, he needed it immediately. He needed it immediately. That's why he didn't pray a long prayer. All he simply said is, help. Let me hear somebody shout, help, O oh Lord. So miracles must happen now. You remember, you remember my testimony, and I'm sure my driver of that time had shared the testimony with you to confirm. When we were traveling from the Bada to Ilori, and we came to this narrow bridge that can only take one vehicle at a time in those days before they repair the road. Then once a, a vehicle is on the road, other vehicles from the other side will park and let you pass through. And we were already in the middle of the bridge. It was a bridge over a very deep river. And suddenly a trailer started coming from the other side. Either he didn't see us 
or his brake failed, we never could tell. The bridge cannot take two cars, not to talk of a trailer and a car. And he was coming straight at us. We met in the middle of the bridge. And we were faced with either head-on collision, death, or fall into the river and drown. There was no time for a long prayer. There was only time to shout a name. Thank you, Father. Somehow, we met in the middle of the bridge and we passed. When we arrived at the other end of the bridge, my driver parked and he was shaking like banana leaf. I was sitting behind him and I, I don't know like what leaf I was shaking because I was shaking more than himself. Fortunately, he didn't look back. He was busy with his own shaking. Finally, I composed myself before he asked, Daddy, what happened? I said, God expanded the bridge. There are some miracles that must happen now. Stand on your feet and cry to the Almighty God. I said, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, deal with my case now. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. Now, now, I'm not talking about 24 hours. Now, deal with my case now. tomorrow not 24 hours I need the miracle now deal with my situation now now oh Lord not one year not one month not one week not even 24 hours now deal with my case now because I know you can do it now you can do it right now right now and that's what I want that's what I want deal with my situation now 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 not tomorrow not next week not next month not next year, now. Now, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please be seated. We have practically arrived. God can perform a miracle within a year. He can perform a miracle within a month. He can perform a miracle within a week. He can perform a miracle within a day. He can perform a miracle now. But then the text, I mean the passage we are asked to deal with is before the call. A miracle before you even call. Exodus 15, verse 22 to 25. Exodus 15, 22 to 25. The children of Israel were going on their journey and they came to Marah. 
and they couldn't drink of the water because it was bitter and God spoke to Moses and said you see that tree just take a branch of the tree and throw it to the water and the water will become sweet the tree didn't grow the day Moses arrived the tree had been there before the children of Israel arrived in first Kings chapter 17 verse 8 to 16 first Kings 17 verse 8 to 16 <sighs> thank you father the Lord asked me to tell someone He said you will testify very soon. <laughs> and your testimony is going to be the one that I've been laying siege of my family has been uprooted. Amen. The Lord said there's someone here tonight. He said, I will reveal to you open doors. And I will give you the wisdom to handle them. In First Kings chapter 17, verse 8 to 16. The widow of Zarephath was going to gather sticks to prepare the last meal for herself and her son. But unknown to her, before she went to look for firewood, help was already coming. God had already spoken to Elijah, go to Zarephath. It's a widow there waiting for a miracle before they call. Several years ago in the US, I was on my way to Tulsa. But I decided to spend a night in Dallas before I can reconnect my flight. The following day, as I was being taken to the airport, my son that I, I stayed with was driving me to the airport. And God spoke to me and said, Son, the headquarters of my church in America is going to be in Dallas. At that time, we, had, we didn't even have house fellowship. And I told my son, was by my side this is what god has just told me and he said amen you know you know that kind of amen years passed we started the church not in dallas far away but one day that same son went to a restaurant to eat as he sat down to eat, one wise man came to him, white man came to him and says, Sir, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Nigeria. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm a missionary. Why are you asking? The man said, years ago, God told him, go and buy land farmland 140 acres lord i'm not a farmer i'm not interested god said you're not the one who, are, who is going to do who will use the land you are buying it for someone as my son was eating god spoke to him again and said Haha, that's the representative of those who will use the land 
before they call. He said, I will answer. This is your last prayer tonight, and I want you to pray it with all your heart. You see, before you were born, there is a miracle with your name written on it. Cry to God and say, Father, that miracle that you reserve for me before the foundation of the world, release it tonight. Open your mouth and cry unto the Almighty God. I know the miracle had been there before I was born. That miracle, Lord God Almighty, with my name on it, before the foundation of the world, release it to me tonight. Before the call, I will answer. Before I was born, you had your plan. You had a miracle you reserved for me. I want it now. Release that miracle now. I know you have a miracle reserved for me with my name on it. Uh huh. This very moment, release unto me. Release it to me right now, right now, right now. Release it unto me right now. I know the miracle is there with my name on it. Release it to me right now. Thank you, Father. Jesus mighty name we have prayed and now before I pray for you please join hands with your neighbor let's apply the law of harvest again you're going to pray for your neighbor lift your voice to heaven and say father the miracle you reserved for my neighbor release it now go ahead talk to the almighty God with the art miracle that you have reserved for my neighbor. Release it now, Daddy. Release it now. Release it now. Release it now. That miracle that you have reserved. For my neighbor, release it now, release it now, release it now, release it now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. All right, now lift your hands to the heavens as I pray for you. My Father, my God, I want to bless your holy name. Before you made the world, you had already planned the lives of everybody here. And there's a miracle you reserve for each fellow. A miracle with their names written on it. You knew they were going to call on you tonight. Father, right now, release the miracle. Omega, release the miracle.
Your word says, known unto God are all his works from the foundations of the world. You knew your children are going to come tonight. You knew they were going to cry unto you today. Father, release their miracle. My Lord and my Savior, before the sun rises tomorrow, let them rejoice. Thank you, my Father and my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I'm sure you know that tomorrow there will be no vacant seats, so come early, and if you prefer to watch from the old auditorium, feel free, but I'm telling you tomorrow is going to be an extraordinary day. There will be complete restoration tomorrow in Jesus' mighty name. Who got the biggest miracle tonight? Shout the biggest hallelujah.